Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Mikey boy, the season is upon us. It's close. The temperatures are creeping up, RB. The courses are thawing out here in Ontario. Golfers are ready to hit the course. I'm ready. You? Oh, like, just give me an open golf course, Dying. please. So I think uh, lots of golfers, when they came out of golf and hibernation, find, trying to find their game and, and they're trying to kind of get themselves calibrated, right? Get ready to get back on the course and, and play some good stuff. I think one of the best things golfers can do is, is get into, whether they do it all winter or not, but get into a sim early on, get the, have the ability to get some numbers. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Love it. Guys, we're gonna talk specifically on iron compression. Uh, I still believe this is a very misunderstood term, something that, you know, when people talk about, I'm not really hitting it good and it's early in the season, I'm not really kind of got my, my game yet. And people try to do some different things to compress the golf ball. And I think most people, a lot of people go about it wrong. I think it's misunderstood. So we're going to talk about, we've got two examples in yourselves, guys, who, you know, you come at it from different speeds, mm -hmm. but you also come at it from different deliveries. Definitely. And, and I think it'd be quite good to show people uh, a bit of the range in that. And then, you know, I'll, I'll do a little kind of demonstration of what I believe that people think compression is and, uh, and really ultimately what you need to be doing to, to get more. Excited. Okay. RB, do me a favor, hit a few six irons. Uh, you have your T100S irons? I do have a uh, right there. couple T100Ss here. I got my okay. six irons, so ready to hit a few shots. Love it. Have you, have you had a chance to hit any yet, or is this, is this the maiden voyage? I pulled the plastic off from 20 minutes ago. <laughs> that sounds good to me. I felt okay. Okay, yep. Wasn't Pretty a good centered. one. It's early season, I just want to get close to the green. Short game, we'll figure the rest out. Certainly sounded like the best one of the three. Nice RB. That's the feathered six iron we, <laughs> we know. Of late, pin Very high. familiar. Very, very good. Okay, Michael. Let's do it. Same club. Okay. No, no changing of any lofts, lies, anything along those lines. Will you step in and give me five of your best six irons, okay? okay? That was great. Really good swing, Mike. Mm. Great swing. That was so good. Is this the stripe show? How do you do it, Mike? That's what I need to learn. <laughs> very, very good. Excellent. Should get a set of these. I love it when these videos go this way, right? It's perfect. So we were talking about compression. We were talking about um, players who have either too much or too little, and really what is compression, trying to understand the, the term a little bit better. RB has quite a bit more club head speed than mm -hmm. Mikey, you know, six miles an hour more. This efficiency uh, smash factor for the, the radar users, the, the TrackMan users out there. So if we take the ball speed, divide it by the club head speed, it tells how efficiently we're turning our club head speed into energy and output. So in this case, you guys are pretty similar from an angle of attack standpoint. Mike is ever so slightly uh, steeper on it. So, I mean, incrementally hitting it higher up the blade. Um, RB, your pass a little more out to in. Mike is doing a heck of a job to he's zero this zero this stuff out. Um, and then from the biggest difference is, although, we have a very similar angle of attack. Mike is seven degrees stronger at impact. It's a full club, a club and a bit, right? It's, it's, it's two clubs, isn't it? I mean, if, if you were able to, if you were to take those, those two shots at the same speed, you'd be looking at, you know, fully two clubs. I mean, as it is, we're looking at a good half a club, a little bit more than half a club. So I think, guys, this is a great example of how to, how to get more out of what you've got 
you know, Mikey's been working for a while at trying to get more speed and it's, it's creeping, right? But yeah. what you've done an, a, a tremendous job is, is getting your club face into a much stronger position yeah. uh, and getting into a, you know, a really, really nice impact. So you're definitely taking some form of a divot Right, that's new to you. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, it's been a while since you bruised the turf. Yeah, I could, uh, I could hit a golf ball off your forehead, and you'd be perfectly yeah, fine. I, was, I wouldn't trust you to do it, but uh, take your word. And then, RB, I mean, you're you're very much clipping it right off the turf. Okay, I'll take one off the top of your head. I'll see you. Yeah, see who takes turf first. Uh, well, I would trust RB before I trust uh, Mikey with those numbers. But guys, the moral of the story is when it comes to compression. We have to narrow that spin loft, num uh, spin loft window, that plane that we, we talk about. So, you know, when we, for the, the people who are somewhat new to the channel, uh, and those of you who have, have heard this before, I mean, I hope, hope I don't bore you by going through it again. Let's, let's look at what spin loft is. Let's look at what compression is. Ultimately, the difference between angle of attack and dynamic loft is compression. So the wider that becomes, whether that's, Add in loft through delivery or add in loft through your club selection, we will either produce more or less energy for the same strike. So with Mike, really for the same angle of attack, both, both guys are a little bit down. So if there's, if there's the ground at zero and we're both a little bit down, we have varying amounts of, of dynamic loft lowering or raising that upper jaw of the plane. When we obviously uh, raise the upper jaw of the plane, we create less energy. Uh, and obviously we get less bang for our buck. Mikey's getting much, much more bang for our buck. So here's, and this is where I want to talk about what I believe people think compression is. Okay, so I'm going to kind of tag in for Mikey a second. Okay, so we're going to give it a, a couple of different examples. We're going to talk about the, again, the, the, the steeper form of what people believe is compression, and then what I believe people should try to do to create a little bit more compression. So that's a little bit more dynamic loft than I'm used to. Certainly felt like I hit down a little bit more in that one. So that's six down. That's better. One more. Certainly trying to get a little bit steeper on it. In, in doing so, the only thing I really achieved was, was creating a wider spin loft mm. window. Um, the difference between the, the angle of attack, the difference between the dynamic loft increased by, uh, from my normal, by probably about five degrees. So, Efficiency went down, speed was up, ball speed was okay, but that's not what I would call compression, okay? So if I'm really talking about compression, I wanna try and get shallower and I wanna try and get more, more shaft lean, or at least the club face in a stronger position that helps create more shaft lean. So, you know, if I'm, we were doing it last week on the, uh, the, the island hole, weren't we? We were trying to kind of knock that one down a little bit and that's, that's certainly the type of feel when you see that sawed off finish. So that's definitely what we, we want to feel a little more of. So your lead hand's gonna exit left. So, pocket. I mean, absolutely. When you, when you pull the handle further forward, back to Grand Vista RB, when that handle moves further forward, you better make sure it's turning mm -hmm. the corner, right? Because the more it goes this way, we have to make sure the sweet spot keeps right. traveling or yeah. shank hippotamus. So then we move, obviously, we move the shot shape the other way. Didn't really feel like I swung any harder at it, if I'm being honest. But I was marginally in similar angle of attack. What was the difference in the dynamic loft? About two clubs. Drastic change in ball flight there. I think that's, that's where the, we, and you mentioned it earlier there, is the, um, you know, the 17th green at Sawgrass, yeah. at the players. We did our own kind of test version of it, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. But 
you saw a lot of players who did not adjust their ability to like control spin and control flight and compress the ball. Absolutely. Hit down on it more. Yeah, and, and as soon as they hit down on it more, you know, we, it's a it's the bad adage when it comes to golf because you hear people say it. Hit down, ball goes up. Yeah. In theory, really simplified, of course that is true. But the more you hit down on it, the more spin you create, the less compression you create, and that's where you get a shot that will fly very weak and very high, and it's something that I, myself, am quite familiar with. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly right. I always try to remind people, I mean, we'll go back to our, our plane because I think it gives us such a good idea. Um, you know, if we're talking compression, right, and we're talking about having a shallow-ish angle of attack, not being overly steep, and we're talking about having less dynamic loft. So say we're two degrees down, 22 degrees of dynamic loft for round number, so we've got 20 degrees of spin loft. Ideally for me, if I, if I, if I want to just move that trajectory up and down, I want, them, I want them tied together, right? So if I go down to being five degrees down, I want that, I want that uh, dynamic loft to come down you know, by, by another three degrees also. So I want that to be 17 degrees so it keeps the spin loft difference. So, you know, always remembering that launch angle will always sit just below dynamic loft. 80, 85% of, of dynamic loft given a centered strike is where launch angle comes out. So, you know, as much as when we try and move the ball flight around, always being mindful that it's gonna, the, the, the trajectory will sit just below where I deliver the loft. Okay, what I kind of want to show is that we can create more distance without swinging faster. Ultimately, that's what we're going to get by, by having compression. Obviously, the ability to fluctuate trajectory, but we, we want to be able to create as much energy as, as, as we can for the amount of club head speed that we have. Uh, club head speed is potential energy and ball speed is the recognized amount of energy that we, we are able to attain. Sounded good. Okay, so when we can walk through this and, and we look at the ability to maneuver spin loft, create this compression number, I like for me personally to have the angle attack, for me my number is about four with a six iron. The reason I like it four, it moves the strike up the head a little bit. If you look at where you guys are in your angle attack, shallower will always be a little low in the head. Right. Modern heads are getting better, especially these hollow bodies. Mm. Uh, they're very, very good low in the head. But I do think if we can get a little bit on the steeper side, you know, that's going to really help. Ryan and I effectively, I mean, Ryan swung his six iron quicker than me in, in that example by, what, two miles an hour? Yet there's almost 12 degrees of loft that's difference uh, between it. So... I think if we're looking at compression, we have to understand what it is, which is the ability to control the loft relative to your angle of attack. Mm. That's what true compression is. For this example, you know, you, you swung at my speed, I, you geared down a little bit to, to showcase that. But that, like, if we were on the golf course, there's no way we could club against each other because we're yeah. hitting golf with the same loft and you know, it's six, was it 16 yards? No. Almost 20 yards yeah, further. 18 yeah. yards of, of difference for, for more input going, going, into, uh, going into your swing RB. So you've got more potential on that example than me, but really you know, getting that handle into position to deliver it. And we can do a little bit of our bit in the bay and that, you know, modern clubs have strength and we all know that. And um, you know, we, can use, we can use equipment to bring that, that dynamic loft number down, but ultimately we, we would love more to come from the delivery. We'd love to get into a nice you know, forward shaft lean position where we can you know, move that strike up the head a little bit and make sure we get that nice feel you know, where you're just kind of controlling the, the flight. And you know, we, when you see the, the launch and spin numbers, if you ever get a chance to see you know, the track man averages that they show from PGA Tour players, I mean, they don't launch their irons high. Their no. launch is, is much lower than the average amateur because of, they're getting more uh, more compression, they're getting more lean with that, that shaft. So, you know, you and I have a solid eight degrees of difference. With our golf balls, our BR, looking at that white and red trajectory, they're launching just through entirely different windows. Yeah. Very different. It's where I would get very frustrated trying to club off you, Mike, on a, on a par three course. Yeah. 
Interesting test, though. I think good uh, explanation, not just for the consumer, but for other fitters out there, too. Yeah. You can learn a lot from this to, to understand different profiles of players that are coming through the, through the door. I think this is where we see, like, the stronger lofted irons mm -hmm. for a lot of players who are like myself, mm -hmm. who might play a little bit more dynamic loft. Why we've seen irons like T200, P790, yeah. Callaway Apex, mm -hmm. um, all these examples of irons that are stronger lofted but offer a lot of forgiveness. That's where people are picking. It's not just the, the loft, literally, but it's, it's the ability for them to be more efficient with their, their impact. And that's why these irons like in that category are so popular. 100%. No, there's, there's a lot to, lot to be learned from that, guys. And we're talking to you guys as people who, if you're in southern states, you've been playing for a little while. If you're in the UK, you're, you're getting out now a little ahead of us. And we're just starting to think about gearing up for the season. And, you know, if you've started the season or you know maybe this is, this is something that you default into as a flaw, hopefully there's a little bit of something you can take to the driving range. And when you think about compression, I don't want people going and slamming their club, you know, trying to just get steeper. It's not a case of compressing the ball against the ground. It's not that at all. It's, it's a case of managing your angle of attack with a nice forward shaft lean in order to create more more pressure into the back of the golf ball. Ultimately, that's, that's what it is. So we're going to create more pressure by, by having a, a narrower spin loft window like we explained earlier on. So, you know, hopefully that can take the burden off people thinking, I've got to swing faster, I've got to swing faster. Just, you've got, to, you've got to get a little bit more efficient with the speed that you do have. That's the low-hanging fruit. And if you can get faster, I mean, you've got a heck of a lot faster, RB. You know, for you, it's, it's about chasing the compression. Now it's getting that handle forward to match up the good stuff you, you've been doing with super speed. So, uh, and, and Mike, probably the opposite with you, the great stuff you've been doing with your swing in order to create good compression. Now it's for you to just up the, up the horsepower a little bit and, uh, and you boys will be, be playing some pretty good golf this year. I gotta catch up to you. There you go. Okay. And the idea of this is to help you better understand your own game as we head into the season. But, you know, any time of the season, I'm sure this, you can reference back to this and, and really help understand what you're looking at as far as ball flight is concerned, what you're doing at impact that is creating the ball flight that you're seeing. Hopefully, you learned something with this today and see three examples, uh, very three different examples of ball flight and what's created out there. So again, I hope you liked this video. Please use the comment section below. If you have questions about ball flight, spin, understanding other elements that we talk about on this channel, use the comment section below and we're happy to answer them. And as always, thanks so much for watching.